So, so to be clear, you are committing that within five years there will be clean water on all for all first nations. All those ninety-three communities, yes. On nous dit depuis toujours que l'eau est sacrée, qu'elle prend soin de nous, nous unit, nous guérit. Mais l'eau potable n'est pas à la portée de tous. Et on peut nous en priver, nous la voler. On le sait trop bien. Depuis notre dernière visite à Grassy Narrows, il y a six ans, on tente de guérir le mal causé par l'eau toxique. L'usine de traitement est enfin réparée, après des années vécues sans eau potable. Toutefois, le mercure s'est installé à Grassy Narrows. Il vit dans le corps de ceux et celles qui l'a empoisonné, de génération en génération, des grands-parents ou petits-enfants. Et ça fait plus de 50 ans que ça dure. Le mercure est invisible à l'œil, mais le vide laissé par ses victimes nous rappelle son existence. Steve et Simon Fobester sont partis beaucoup trop tôt. Ces deux anciens chefs de Grassy Narrows ont consacré leur vie à demander justice pour leur communauté. Et la lutte se poursuit. There's two issues to do with water in grassy narrows. One is mercury poisoning, which is 10 tons of mercury that we got um, that was dumped by a Dryden mill. And then you get poison through the fish that way. And then the, the other side is the water emergency. That's a fixable solution through the water tower filtration system and water intake. My grandfather was Steve Fobister Sr. He was a, a chief slash grand chief of JD3 area. He had so much knowledge and everything. Like he, he knew well about the land and he, he had so much information, you know, about what was right and wrong in the land, you know. He explained in high detail, you know, what was wrong with the water and why it was poisoned. And, you know, he really spoke up for everyone. The water treatment plant has been upgraded recently, and I know that, I don't know how, how effective it will be, but to me it's still a, to me it's still a bandage. The last 20 years we've had so many boil water advisories and all that, and I think people have learned to not trust the tap water. I'll use my grandson as an example. Like he's five years old right now. His whole, like his whole life, like that's where our water comes from is the big blue jugs, right? So one day um, we went to stay in Kenora and uh, we were in a hotel room. I grabbed water from the tap and he kind of like freaked out, you know, he was like, like, no, 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 you know, don't drink, don't drink that water. He's like, it's, it's dirty. In 2002, when we put up the blockade, it was all a part of just having enough of everything. And the blockade's still up. It's uh, uh, 2002, it's been tw going on for 20 years, and, uh, and we've, we're going to keep it going. And it's, it is right now the longest running blockade in Canadian history. Where we had the blockade, there's a Sundance ground there now. Little by little, you know, there is healing happening. Our way of life, you know, it, it, it gave us a purpose and that, that was robbed for, from us. And then now we're fighting to get that back, you know, and to give at least, you know, the younger ones a chance to, to feel that, to, 
to be okay, I guess. It's a big fight we're in right now, like to survive as Nishnabe people. If there's no water, we would die of thirst. But we want to live. The list of advisories that most Canadians have seen are long-term drinking water advisories that are over one year in length. It really is the tip of the iceberg. Many nations who face long-term advisories on their individual systems that are never reported in the news and never make you know, public knowledge. No one really knows about what's happening. Many people have been living under boil water advisories for such a long time that we, we understand the frustration and sometimes the hopelessness that many people feel is like, well, I've been struggling with this for so long and you guys can, yeah, you can have your conversations at those other tables, but what does that mean to me? So trying to change the narrative, even within our own communities to say that not only do we hear the concerns and the frustrations, but here are some actual tangible solutions on the ground that we're starting to address. it's important to educate everybody, inspire them, and, and also show them, like, we can gain access to clean drinking water. So when it comes to First Nations, again, for me personally, as, as a leader in my community, I'm not asking for sympathy. I'm not asking for pity. I'm not asking for special treatment. Simply would like respect and, and equality. We are all treaty people. L'accès à l'eau potable est inégal, en plus d'être menacé par les grands pollueurs. Pourtant, L'eau potable est un droit fondamental. Water is life-giving. Water is our responsibility. Water is medicine. Water is healing, powerful and alive. Never stop speaking up for the water. Never, never stop. Dans notre pays, trop de gens n'ont toujours pas d'eau potable. Nous avons atteint notre point d'ébullition. Give me breath away.